Hi everybody, um, thanks for taking some time to take a look at a new offering that we have for you as Roku channel developers for making it easier to do channel automation testing. Um, we're providing you basically a Selenium style implementation that will let you do automation tests that also include UI testing. Uh, which is kind of a nice improvement over some of the, um, the current offerings that we have. And we'll get into some examples of that in a little bit. First thing I would like to do is kind of walk you through um, sort of a high level overview of the basic technology stack, if you will, that we implemented to make this solution work. Um, the first piece of it, as I mentioned, is um, an implementation of a subset of the Selenium commands that you might be familiar with from using a Selenium based solution for other platforms like doing web automation testing. Um, the subset of those are shown in this table uh, that's on the screen right now and you'll notice if you're familiar with, with Selenium that this isn't a complete set, it's a, it's a subset of the types of commands that are relevant to uh, Roku channel development. Um, in addition to that then um, we implemented a HTTP server, which basically services those REST API calls, as well as an ECP client that sits underneath, of, and underneath that. So the, the commands come in as HTTP REST calls. Those get translated into ECP commands, which are what actually get sent out um, to control the actual device. So that server, if, uh, if you're looking in the actual implementation and source, lives under the source directory you'll see there's an ECP client folder, there's an HTTP server folder. This is all implemented in Golang. Um, and to build it, there's a go, uh, main.go that you compile, and that generates main.exe, which is essentially the three server and ECP client combined. The other piece that you need then is um, your test scripts, as well as um, there's a driver uh, client. Uh, let me go show you that. So if I go into the sample script folder, you'll see there's a webdriver.python. Um, that's basically the client side of the REST API calls. So that's uh, basically a, a set of wrappers for making those HTTP uh, calls for you. And then uh, in addition to that, then you need your actual tests. Um, so you can write your test scripts using the solution in any language like Java or Go or, or Python. Um, We'll show you in a little bit that we make this even easier. We added some extensions to support the popular robot framework. Um, but the first thing I'll show you is that you can do this yourself from scratch, writing your own test clients if you, if you want to do that. So let's get right into showing an example of how this works. Um, I'll show you first what the main.py file looks like. Uh, it's basically, again, it's Python code that is implementing a set of test cases. And the test cases are against a uh, test channel that I'm going to go ahead and sideload. The channel in question lives under this directory. And I'll do the install. And the channel, basically, all it is is it's a simple grid layout um, that does uh, video playback. And it's actually authenticated. So there's very simple authentication associated with this channel. So to run it um, to play video, you actually have to sign in with a username and password that's kind of hard-coded into the, into the channel and into the test script. If you're already logged in and you launch and play, you'll you, uh, you launch the channel, you'll just get a play button in the details screen. So what this is going to demonstrate is two things. Certainly just a script running against our uh, Selenium REST endpoints itself, but also the test case itself, as I show you our main.py again, is there is verification code that says, hey, are you already logged in? It'll check the details screen that's up and see if you have a uh, authenticate button or a, a play button and use that screen state to know whether or not the test script has to go off, authenticate you, or just do playback. So you can do UI state driven test cases, which is really, really handy. So let's go ahead and run this script and you'll see there's my main.py and all I need to do there's two things I have to do first as I mentioned before there's this HTTP server and ECP client that have to be running to service these commands so I'm going to go manually launch that 
Um, again, when we get to the robot case, you'll see that all happens automatically. But raw, bare bones implementation is you go start main there. So there's the server running. And then back in my command line, I just have to run my test case. So I'm going to run Python main.py. And then over on the TV, you'll see the channel launches. And it's going to start running through those test cases. The first thing it does is, oh, here's the detail screen. There's an authenticate to watch button. So back to the script, if you'll notice, it's checking if you are authenticated by looking at that, uh, the screen state. And if so, it goes into a step, the test steps that force you to log in, which is this code here. So it's going to enter the hard-coded username and password, and then everything works. Video playback starts, and the test is done. So I'm going to exit the channel. So that's, again, very high level the automation solution running kind of from scratch, as you, you might say. Launch the HTTP server and the associated ECP client by running main.exe, and then run your hand-coded Python or Java or Go-based test cases. It's even more convenient if we um, start to use a kind of a popular automation framework and the one that we've uh, centered on because we use it for some things internally is a robot. The stack is essentially the same. It's the same HTTP server and ECP client under the hood that's going to run. Um, your test cases now on the very top of the, of the test case stack are now instead of uh, necessarily having to write just raw Python code or Java code, you can write your test cases like this. You can see for example, a case of a robot script which with its own syntax for a t the similar test case that we just saw, and I'll run in a minute. Um, the nice thing about this is you, know, you define your test cases in this sort of uh, high-level scripting language. You can define test case specific keywords um, similar to the previous case. Um, we have a do auth keyword which is uh, used in the case that you have to authenticate, so it defines the steps that you run to authenticate that same test channel. And um, in addition to that, in the middle, there is a robot library that we wrote that implements a bunch of very common uh, robot keywords that are specific to Roku. Let me show you that real quickly. So here's ro uh, robot, dot, robot library dot py. And in here is a whole set of commands that are reusable that you're going to want to probably use for most of the automation tests that you ever write. Things like launching a channel, sending key presses, um, th that, that sort of thing. So we're giving you that sort of for free uh, that you can leverage as a library from your own test cases. And then, as uh, we showed in the, this very specific uh, test case, if you have your own keyword needs, of course, just like with any other robot work you might do, you can write those keywords. In this case, here's one for doing authentication. I'm going to now um, sideload a different test channel to exercise this example. It's essentially the same app. And now I'm going to go to, in my command line, go to the robot library folder. And now I've under the tests folder, there's a whole bunch of robot scripts, one of which is this basic underscore test.robot that I was showing you. We're going to run that test case to sort of parallel the do it from scratch non-robot test case that we just showed. So I'm going to run Python robot run. There's a, as you see in the, in the um, command line, there's an output directory argument. Uh, I'm going to show you what that's all about in a minute. We're actually, in addition to running the test, robot's going to generate some really nice test results for us. And then you specify the actual robot test case. So I'm going to let this run. And again, my channel launches. It's going to go in. Now, the first thing it does, it says, oh, well, I have a play button. So it's just going to go launch video playback, and then the test case will end. Um, it will also, it's responsive to whether or not you're logged in. So I'm going to go and just manually run the channel, and I'm going to log out. So if I hit the star key here, there's a log out option. So now I'm not authenticated, 
And if I run this same test case again, and I'll show you the robot code is at the same time, it's going to go off and say, well, I launch the channel and I check and I see that I have a authenticate to watch screen element that's active. So this test case, this, this step in the, the test case is going to say, I got to run to this authentication keyword now because I'm not logged in. So it's going through and doing the send key events and everything to enter the username and password for the channel. And then when that's done, it will start playback and verify that playback is, is started. And if all of those steps pass, the test case passes and we'll see those results in a minute in our nice uh, robot uh, test results output. So there we go, video playback is going. From the command line, I can see that uh, you see on the, uh, on the command line that all the test cases pass. So you can get a sense of that as you're running the test. And then, as I mentioned, I can go out into the results folder under that robot library subsection, pull the log, drag and drop here, pull the log.html file, and lo and behold, there sits a nice uh, robot output showing the test execution. It's the test suite itself, all of the individual test cases that ran, um, the data associated with those test cases, and the uh, pass-fail results of the test. So that's kind of a quick overview of what we have to offer. Uh, hope you guys enjoy using this and it makes your testing lives even easier. Thank you.